Today in this video I want to talk about hydroponics versus soil and the goal of this video is to help out those just getting started in the horticultural hobby or those who might have been using soil for a while and haven't really tried hydroponics. Um, this is by no means an expert opinion, this is my opinion, I'm more of an enthusiast. Um, if there's anyone out there who is an expert and wants to leave a comment below, any beginners can probably find more information in the comments as well. So when I talk about hydroponics, I'm not talking about putting all of your plants in hydroponics, such as like the house plants you see on the windowsill behind me. The plants I'm talking about are plants that you'd find in your garden, so just a summer garden, so things that have a short life cycle or soft tissue plants, anything that's fast growing or relatively fast growing. So things like lettuce, uh, any kind of herbs, uh, tomatoes, vegetables and fruit, you know, just in general. All those plants are generally going to have a, a good response growing hydroponically. So I want to talk about the pros and cons of hydroponics versus soil. I'm not going to talk about the soil pros and cons in particular. I'm just going to integrate that with what I'm talking about with hydroponics. So I have a list here I'm going to talk about here with you. So let's just get right into that. So the first thing is I'm going to talk about uh, are pests. So when you're growing hydroponically, you're almost a guarantee you're going to have a less of a pest problem than if you're growing with soil. If you buy soil from the store or if you take it outside, please don't take soil from outside in your garden, bring it inside the house. <laughs> buy soil, it's usually going to be a little bit more sterile. Um, but the problem with soil in general, no matter where you get it from, is that you're, you're almost guaranteed to have some kind of pest in the soil. Uh, fungal gnats are a huge problem. Uh, I wouldn't say they're a problem so much to your plant, but they're a problem to you because they breed quickly, they lay so many eggs in the soil you can't see them, and they hatch really quickly and they just go all over the place. Uh, so if you're growing in soil, um, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to have fungal gnats. A and anyone who's grown in soil at one time or another has had them or has them and they're a pain to get rid of. The only way you're guaranteed to not have any kind of pest in your soil is if you were to cook it in the oven and sterilize it. The downside to doing that is if you did put it in your oven, you're going to kill all the beneficial fungus and bacteria that's in there because plants need that to, to grow with. It's a symbiotic relationship. In hydroponics, you're still going to get some kind of pest. You can get some kind of pests. Um, even if you're growing inside your house and never brought a plant in from outside, you can still get pests. Um, you're going to get a lot less of them. You can still get fungal gnats, uh, but you're going to get probably 1% of the fungal gnats that you would get versus soil. Uh, the fungal gnats won't necessarily lay their eggs in the solution, but they'll lay their eggs in something like the rock wool or the clay pebbles that are in the net pots that you use. So I've had them personally even in hydroponics, but they're a lot easier to manage and get rid of versus soil. So you can also get stuff like aphids if you, if you use soil. If you get aphids, um, that could be a big problem to your plants as well. Uh, it can ruin an entire grow if they get out of, out of control. So next thing I want to talk about is watering. And in hydroponics or soil, you're still using water. But if you're using soil to grow your plants, you're going to use a lot more water versus hydroponics, depending on the type of hydroponics you're doing. But if you're watering your plant in soil, if you're doing it properly, you have to water it so that the water goes all the way through the soil and comes out the bottom. Uh, you can't just water the top a little bit and get the, the top moist. It needs to be saturated all the way down to the bottom and there has to be good drainage. So naturally, you're going to have a lot of wastewater if you're watering something that's growing in soil. In hydroponics, you don't have to worry about that. You just fill the container up and it will utilize what, whatever is in there. Nothing gets wasted, except for the stuff you have to dump down the drain after you change your solution, but that's far less. Uh, so for example, if you're growing anything in like say like a one or two gallon pot or even a five gallon pot, you're going to go through gallons of water every day to every other day, uh, depending on your watering schedule and the size of the pot and the, and the plant size. Some plants are very water hungry, so as a plant gets larger, a lot more water will be soaked up in the soil and it will utilize that. But the problem becomes that um, when you have to keep watering it so much and making sure the soil, the soil stays wet, is that you're still going to have that wastewater. So that's kind of one of the downsides to soil versus hydro is you're going to have less wastewater. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about uh, kind of ties into what I was just talking about is just less watering. It just means that you don't have to go, you don't have to have a watering schedule 
or a nutrient feeding schedule on a daily basis. So in hydroponics, you're pretty much just making a, a batch of solution, five gallons maybe, 10 gallons depending on your reservoir size, and you're just gonna dump it in there and it's gonna utilize that for a week to two weeks. Um, and depending on how many plants or how large your plants you have growing in there, it's not necessarily going to utilize all of that or not, maybe not even half that. It depends on the situation. Uh, but in most cases, that's um, a lot easier than growing in soil because you can almost just set it and forget it. That's one of the biggest advantages of hydroponics is set it and forget it. But I'm gonna talk a little more about why that's a negative also in, in, the, in a few minutes. Um, also, with hydroponics, you have more control. Uh, and by that, I mean, if you are trying to do some kind of experiment, uh, like what I do in my videos, is even if you grow something in soil in the same container, you could have different spots in that soil that are either more fer fertile or less fertile than other spots, or you could have uh, anaerobic bacteria in one spot of the soil versus another. So uh, you don't have that kind of control if you're doing experiments if, than if you're growing in hydroponics in the same container. Uh, the other thing is, let's see, the residual ferts. Okay, so if you're using hydroponics, uh, there's always going to be residual ferts that are, are fertilizers and nutrients and stuff that's in the solution. Uh, and you're going to actually empty that out and change it out eventually. But in soil, uh, when you're trying to go through and do a grow of some sort, you're going to have to change your solution at some point depending on the phase of the growth. And some people like to do a whole bunch of different things with their fertilizers. And the problem becomes that if, when you go to change your, your regimen, you have to go through a flushing process of the soil uh, because there's going to be residual uh, salt buildup and everything in there. Uh, and, and different kinds of minerals, and you need to flush throws through. So you got to dump gallons and gallons of water through the soil, and sometimes using a solution to help flush it through. With hydroponics, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just change the solution, and you're done. There's no flushing. There's no wasting water. Nothing like that. Um, the advantages also is to hydroponics is the adjustments you can make. So if you need to change the solution by a little bit, you need to adjust the pH by a little bit. Uh, you can easily do that if you're more of an expert in it, you know um, how to do it. Uh, be this might be a little more difficult for a beginner to do, but you can make adjustments fairly easily. In soil, you can't do that so much. Usually the pH of the soil is very hard to change on, on an instant type basis. Uh, you also can't um, make any adjustments to anything else that's in there and that's in already in the soil because like I was talking about before, residual stuff. Um, once it's in there, a lot of stuff, it's, it's going to stay in there. You can't, just, you can't just change it out unless you take the soil off of the roots and, uh, you know, and put it in new soil and just start over. With hydroponics, you're essentially changing the soil out in a way every single time you want to change something. Um, that's, that's just a couple things. It's not, it's not a huge deal. If you're thinking about starting a hydroponics, you don't need to worry about um, getting into too much of that but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute here. Uh, another con, not a con, a pro, another pro that you have is, is faster growth. I guess that could be a con depending on the way that you look at it, but um, in general, hydroponics, things are gonna grow a lot quicker because they have a nutrients available to them all the time. They have what they need. Uh, they're constantly in water. So usually when you're watering something that's in soil, uh, it's only going to be able to uptake the nutrients that are in that solution that you just gave it when you watered it uh, within, I think it's the first 15 minutes or so after you water it. That's where most of it's being, up, being taken up into the plant. So we're in hydroponics, it's always there and available and it's constantly being uptake, uptaken in the plant. So that's how you can get faster growth. There's, there's a little bit more to it than that if you're doing like CO2 injection in, in your grow tent and all that, but, um, and also your lighting, everything matters as well. But, uh, we're not going to talk about that in this video in particular. Uh, the other pro to it is usually is less fertilizer. So in hydroponics, you're only making a solution up that's going to last for a week or two, depending on when you're going to be changing out your solution or uh, just putting in fresh solution. So you're only mixing up a, a small batch with a relatively small amount of fertilizer in there, and it's going to be good for the next week or two. In soil, you don't really have that option because you have to water it on, depending on your schedule and what plant you're growing, how much fertilizer it actually needs. Sometimes you're giving, you're giving fertilizer every other day and you're having to mix up a certain amount in your gallon or two, whatever you're using to water it. And 
when you're, you're doing that every day, you're using more and more and more fertilizer. And by the time you get done with it, you probably use 10 times the amount of fertilizer than what would you you'd be using in hydroponics. Uh, so that's one of the cons of hydroponics versus, sorry, the pros versus hydroponics versus soil. Another pro to that is actually what I was just kind of tying into everything else is that it's cheaper than soil. Uh, and I'm not just talking about all the stuff I just talked about, but in addition to that, your, uh, your soil is relatively expensive. So you're only going to be growing a few plants in, in a certain amount of soil and eventually the nutrients and everything that are in that soil are going to be used up within the first month pretty much and then you're going to have to use fertilizers anyways. Um, so essentially you know in hydroponics you're you've already given it the fertilizer in that solution and it's you is always utilizing it you don't have to add any more continually every other day it's just there. We're in, high, we're in soil, you don't have, you got to worry about that all the time. you got to be fertilizing constantly. So essentially, it becomes kind of like a drain-to-waste hydroponics if you're using soil. So now I want to talk about the cons. The cons, there's not a whole lot of them, but some of these actually tie into the pros to where they can also, the pro can also be a con. Uh, and I, the first thing I want to talk about is actually stability. Uh, in hydroponics, the solution doesn't stay as stable as soil does because in soil, the soil acts as a buffer. It holds on to a pH uh, and it's kind of difficult to manipulate the pH unless you put something in there that changes it. But regular watering and, and nutrients, usually it, it turns slowly more acidic over time. But you can adjust that by either giving it maybe some lime or, uh, or doing a couple flushes and then you can flush out all the nutrient salts in there and you can you can balance the pH back out. Hydroponics, though, it, the, the, the pH of the water can change relatively quickly if you're not paying attention to it. So the other thing is, is if you try to make an adjustment to that, if you try to say it's acidic and you need to make it a little less acidic, because usually it needs to be slightly acidic, uh, but if you're trying to make it less acidic, if you give it too much of pH up, uh, then you've got to put more pH down in it, and it becomes a cycle where you have too much of one or too much of the other. Uh, so that can, that can make things pretty complicated. Uh, also, the, it's not just the pH, but it may utilize some of the nutrients that are in there, and you might start to see deficiencies a lot quicker than you would in soil. So uh, that's also a stability issue. To where in soil, it takes a little bit longer for things to change. Uh, kind of what I said before in the beginning of the video is it's not for all plants. So, like I said, you're not going to be growing a bonsai tree in hydroponics. I, I'm sure it's possible, but it's not practical. Nobody, nobody really wants to do that. Um, other, you know, there's a lot of other plants I could probably describe here, but it's not really necessary to kind of get the point on that. Uh, also, one of the cons is there's a tendency to forget. So I've actually had this problem in, uh, in just a recent video I was doing. I, I missed uh, checking on the solution in the reservoir, and it dried up. And within less than 24 hours, uh, probably even just a few hours of plants wilted, and that was it. There's no way going. There's no going back. It, they're they're done. They're dead. Um, so th the problem is that it it's like I said, it's a pro. So if you're doing hydroponics, it it's kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. And some grows you can just put the solution in there and grow the entire plant without ever changing anything. Such as lettuce, you could probably do that with lettuce. Um, Usually you want to change the solution out at least once every two weeks, and lettuce takes about 30 days. Uh, so you might want to change it out once, but you can do it without changing it. It still works. It doesn't mean the plant's not going to grow or it's going to die. It just means that you're not going to get as good of growth uh, because, like I said before, the pH and everything can change. So that's one of the downsides to hydroponics is that there's, there really is uh, no buffer. So whether it dries out or if you don't, check on your solution, your, your, your pH level turns really acidic, you're going to start noticing deficiencies, and it can turn people off really easily um, if, if they're not checking on things and knowing how to uh, fix things. Uh, generally speaking, my, my opinion is if you're new to hydroponics or you're just a beginner uh, in general to uh, the hobby, is that the easiest way to do it is just to change your solution. Don't try to adjust anything, just change the solution. Uh, that's probably the easiest answer I can give you. Uh, kind of what I was talking about before is there's no forgiveness. 
So if you make a mistake, such as forgetting to add more water to your reservoir, your, your plant's done. In soil, it's going to be, there's a lot more of a buffer. It takes a lot longer for the whole thing to dry out. You'd have to not look at your plant for several days uh, for it to really kill the plant. You might notice it start to wilt, but generally there's a little bit more moisture left in that soil to where a hydroponic reservoir, once the water is gone and evaporated out of there, the roots dry out just instantaneously, just like that, and there's no, not really any going back. The roots don't just revive. Uh, a, a wilty plant can come back because the roots are still moist. But a, a plant that has uh, roots that are dried out, it's done. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is complicated, and I'm not going to get into the specifics in this video because I personally am not a professional, so I can't talk about it. But what I can tell you is that in hydroponic solutions, you may be lacking in some nutrients. If you're just a beginner to it and you're using like a basic just a basic setup and a basic solution, um, you're probably going to run into things where uh, you might have some minor deficiencies. Usually anything you buy from the store is going to have a pretty well-balanced uh, fertilizer in there. It's going to have your macro and micronutrients. Uh, but one of the downsides to hydroponics is there's so many different options and so many things you can add to your solution. A lot of it can be overwhelming. Um, so all I can say about that is uh, just buy something that's simple and already made for you before you get into using something like dry, fertil dry fertilizers and making your own solution. Uh, just buy a ready-made solution. It's going to last you a long time if you're not growing anything large and you're just using small batch stuff. It'll last you a very long time. Uh, so it'll be relatively inexpensive. Uh, and that was the one last thing I want to talk about is if you buy soil, you're going to sp if you're buying good soil, you're going to spend anywhere, you know, from ten to twenty dollars on a bag of soil, and you can spend that much on a, a nutrient solution. Uh, the stuff I use is from General Hydroponics. I use the Trio, uh, the Flora series. Uh, now I have used other additives to that. Um, I've used CalMag and I've used um, a little bit of magnesium. Uh, not magnesium, but well, it is magnesium, but it's Epsom salt. I've used that as well. Uh, what I found is that just just to use whatever is Whatever it says on that bottle and whatever it says to use and the quantities, just follow that if you're a beginner. Uh, later on, you'll become more uh, of an expert at it and you'll start to play with a little bit more and you can probably get different results depending on what kind of solution you use, um, what kind of fertilizer you use. So personally, I like hydroponics over soil. There are some plants that would prefer to be in soil versus hydroponics, but for the most part, if you're trying to grow fruits and vegetables, uh, those, most of those plants work pretty well except for anything that grows on a fruit tree, of course. You're not growing a tree in there. So hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.